Welcome back and happy Easter. If you're watching this, um, this part of our program, you are in grades uh, four and above. And this program is gonna be very similar to what the, what the littles um, saw, but it's going to be a little updated and a little higher level because I, am, I know you understand a little bit more. And so we're going to be begin this session with an Easter prayer. And as we always pray, we pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus came to earth to show us how to live, how to put others first, how to love and how to give. Then he set about his work that God sent him to do. He took our punishment on himself. He made us clean and new. He could have saved himself calling angels from above, but he chose to pay our price for sin. He paid it out of love. Our Lord God died on Good Friday, but the cross did not destroy. His resurrection on Easter morn that fills our hearts with joy. Now we know our earthly death, like his, is just a rest. We'll be forever with him in heaven where life is the best. So we live our lives for Jesus, Think of him in all we do. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Lord. Help us love like you. And let us together say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, you may say to yourself, this is Boyd. What is wrong with you? Easter was already almost two weeks ago. It was on April 4th. Why are you still saying Happy Easter? And the answer to that is, is because Easter the Easter season is actually, it lasts for 50 days. Yes, it's the longest season in our church year. And we have two other special events which take place during the, during the Easter season. And we're going to talk about them a little bit both today. Now, I don't, I don't think by now I have to go over with you what occurred on Easter Sunday. But... On Easter Sunday, we all know that Jesus um, came back from the dead. When the ladies went to the tomb, there was no one there. There was an angel, actually, who told the ladies that Jesus was no longer there. And Jesus appeared to his apostles that same day. The ladies went back, told the apostles, and Jesus did appear to them on Easter Sunday. And... He told them that he would be with them. And he did stay with the apostles for 40 days. And he taught them and he, you know, visited with them. And he actually appeared to different groups of people at that time. So what happens in 40 days? Okay, Jesus told them that he would have to go back to heaven. He would have to leave them. And of course, as we rely on our teachers, our mentors, our parents, um, if we're told that they will have to leave us, we usually are a little bit afraid, right? Um, what other feelings might you feel if, if you learn that someone you truly love um, will be leaving you? Fear, um, sadness, um, kind of like, well, what am I going to do without you? Well, Jesus told them not to worry that he would send someone in his place. And I hope by now that you all know who Jesus would send in his place. Um, and that um, day is Pentecost Sunday. But be, um, is when someone came in Jesus' place. But before then, so 40 days after Easter, we celebrate the Feast of, the Ascens of Ascension Thursday. And it's always on a Thursday. Easter's on a Sunday. 40 days later is um, Ascension Thursday. And so I'm going to read to you from um, the Acts of the Apostles, the story of the Ascension. 
When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem throughout Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When they, he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. And they said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. And so you can hear from this story that Jesus went out with his apostles and he was taken body and soul into heaven. And it also tells us a little bit about the future. We all await Jesus's second coming. And we are told in this reading from the Acts of the Apostles that the angels who were there with them told them that Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. So someday Jesus will come back down to earth, body and soul, um, to take us all then, whoever's here left on earth, into heaven with him. And so that is what occurred on the Feast of the Ascension. But that doesn't answer, well, it did, if you were listening, who Jesus was going to send in his place. And that occurs on a day called Pentecost. Again, Ascension Thursday. Ten days from Thursday is a Sunday. And so ten days after Ascension, we celebrate the Feast of, the, of Pentecost. And I will read to you from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as a fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And I'm sure, sure you've seen pictures. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were very confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and in amazement, and they asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? But how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites. We are inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya, Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome. And yet, we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. And the Holy Spirit stays with us always. Um, some of you who, many of you who will be confirmed in just a few years, we have a group being confirmed this year, will receive the this, this special blessings of the Holy Spirit as they are, are um, confirmed. But Jesus, God, never leaves us alone. God is always with us, and we know that through prayer, we can connect ourselves more closely to God. Now, this year, the date of the Ascension is May 13th. It is a holy day of obligation, which I assume that you know means that the church asks us to attend Mass on that day. It is a day that they say we should be at Mass. It's not a Sunday. However, the Feast of Pentecost is always on a Sunday. It's going to be this year on May 23rd. And so we are once again expected to either be physically at Mass in church or to be watching Mass online 
um, if you don't feel comfortable in churches at this time. So the Feast of the Pentecost is the very last day of Easter. So you know what? You can go around now and you can still wish people a happy Easter. And it might even be a good starting point for you to, for someone to say, why are you still saying happy Easter? Well, now you know, and you can tell them. There's one other topic that I'd like to cover this morning with you, and that is the topic which is very integral to our Catholic faith, and that is the Trinity. Um, we all know um, by now, and again, you're fourth grade and above, you know by now that there is only one true God. Um, there are many people who are called pagans who will believe there are many gods or no gods or whatever, but we know the truth. We know there is only one God. And how, yet, however, when we pray, how do we begin our prayers? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So by now, we should know that there are three beings or three persons in one God. We also should know by now the story of St. Patrick, who lived um, in Ireland, whose feast day is the 17th of March. Well, when he went to Ireland and he tried to convert the people of Ireland from paganism, he needed some way to teach them about the one true God, but the three persons and the one God. And so inspired, I'm sure, by the Holy Spirit, he saw the clover. And the clover, there are many clovers, I understand, in Ireland. It's a very green country it's supposed to be a very beautiful country and he used the clover and we've all seen the clover with god the father god the son who's jesus and god the holy spirit well i'm going to move i guess i would call it almost like a little step up with you today and i'm going to use another example and the example i'm going to use to you with you today is the apple okay there are basically three parts to the apple. The skin of the apple on the outside, the flesh of the apple, and the core. And all the parts are still one apple, yet they are all uniquely different. Each part of the apple, the peel, the flesh, the core, have different functions, yet all are apple and nothing else. The Trinity, the three parts of God, Father, Son, Jesus, and Holy Spirit, are all God in different forms. Just as the peel protects the apple, God the Father protects humankind. An apple has flesh. Jesus was God, made flesh. And the core of the apple, like the Holy Spirit, contains the seeds. Just as seeds of apple trees grow in fertile, watered, and cared for ground, seeds of faith will sprout, grow, and flourish. The seeds of faith are just that, faith in God. We Christians need to nurture and care for one another to keep the seeds of faith alive. And so what can we do, each one of us, what can we do to nurture and care for one another, to keep the seeds of faith alive in each other. And that's just something, you know what, I'm gonna leave with you. I'm not, you know, I, I can't hear you anyways. Um, I'm gonna let you think about a little bit. What can we do? What can you do? And when I say you, I mean you as an individual. What can you do to help the, the seeds of faith, to help grow faith in ourselves and in other people too? And here's a little prayer, and it goes like this. Dear God, help us to know your love through Jesus, to feel your power in the Holy Spirit, and to praise your splendor in creation. Amen. And as we leave this session this morning, I would like us to pray together the prayer, which mentions, actually we're going to pray two prayers together, that mention the Trinity. And as we begin all our prayers as Catholic Christians, we say in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end, amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I'll take this brief time now to say I hope you've had a wonderful year. It's been a difficult year, I know that. It's been a difficult year for us, how I would love to be um, with you in person. But I hope that you've learned something. Um, I hope that you, I hope that you've um, been able to share with others some of the things that you've learned. I ask you to keep your faith alive um, during the upcoming months. Please attend Mass. Please help one another when you can. We are hard at work planning next year. Um, we have some new ideas. Again, we want the, only the best for you and the best learning experience for you. And so until I see you again, I wish you a very happy Easter, very happy summer, and we'll see you in September. Bye-bye.